Yeah, well, I had it all set up really well, and then David messed his up, so he had to come around to my place. (laughs) (laughs) He did a wobbly. He jacked up at the start and refused to score up. Good evening and welcome to the latest edition of Burning Questions. Uh, we're, we're running a little bit behind time, Skid, as I welcome you, and it's great to see you again. I'm feeling pretty in pink, and we've had a good low at least but before this edition. We have. It's uh, a couple of false starts, but uh, good that we've got our two guests here in the room now. Yeah, and there's no doubt we were planning to have them in their respective residences. It hasn't worked out that way. We're sponsored by Hip Pocket Workwear. You can see Puppet's got the work gear on, a little bit of uh, a Nike fedora combination from the very stylish uh, D Miles. But let's go through the story, Puppet, okay? So, I mean, I'm no computer champion, but we had a couple of false starts at home, and you've had to drive the jogger over, uh, over to David Miles' place. Yeah, well, I had it all set up really well, and then – David messed his up, so he had to come around to my place. <laughs> he did a wobbly. He jacked up at the start and refused to score up. Molsey, Mulsey, at one point, there were so many Chris Alfords in the group. Like, he, he'd opened the browser that many times. It was just going to be the three of us and then nine nine puppets with no uh, with no face in them. And he's blaming Ellison for no camera. I don't know what the true story is, but the fact of the matter is we're about to get started. Are we ready to go, boys and girls? Go for it. All right, we'll start with you, Skeet. We'll go to Puppet in a moment because he'll be driving cool water, Paddy. Is the Taswegian ready to warm up at his second run on Victorian soil? Because some morons decided to label him and said he couldn't get beaten at his first run in Victoria. They've got no idea. It didn't happen. But is he ready to roll this week, do we think? Yeah, look, Bon, I think the key thing here is the stewards report and uh, Puppet might be able to give us a bit more information into that. But on the face value, you, it did look to be his race and he did look to have his chance. They only went slow early and uh, and he was beaten by how I to heaven. But um, the stewards report did say that the, the vet report he was carrying a, a bit of condition and had a slightly slower recovery rate. So, look, um, I couldn't really find a horse that I was really confident that could beat him again this week. So I expect if he uh, he improves this week, he's, uh, he's going to be uh, much better. Uh, but I, I did ask you this question on Trot's vision. It's a little bit like a coach talking about a player. They might be carrying a little bit of an injury or they might not be 100%. We never revealed that to the public. You drove him like he would probably need the run. Will we be driving him a bit more aggressively on Saturday night from the second line draw? Oh, I wouldn't really think aggressively, but um, probably a bit more confidence in him. He just felt sluggish last week and, and just had no get up and go in him at all. He's a, like, we know he's a pretty good horse. You're confident. If he's the horse we've seen in Tasmania, you'd be confident he should beat that field. You would think so, but like, it's just different racing over here. They don't seem to go as hard over there. And um, last week, I think they ran the last half in 55-3 and he, he probably never ran a last half quicker than probably 57. So uh, it might take him a little bit of adjusting, but I'm sure he'll be a bit better this week. And now we'll go to the man with more hats than Imelda Marcos had shoes. His name's David Miles. He's wearing a special one today. It took him 45 minutes to choose this one. Is Cool Water Patty immoral on Saturday night or not, Milesy? Uh, no, I don't think so, JB. On his Tassie form, he got beat by Scooter Will Rev a couple of starts down, uh, back down there. Scooter Will Rev had a little short stint in uh, Menangle, was only able to win one race up there and didn't quite make the grade. Um, this fella's probably going to take three or four runs to to get to uh, to get to his best here, and uh, I don't think he's any moral at all, especially from the draw. Well, I've already made an idiot myself once with this horse, so why not go again? I reckon he is probably a moral. I look at the field; I don't think it's a really strong field. I know he might not be any sort of champion in that Tassie form; might not be unbelievably lofty, but I think he's better than those horses. Second question will go to you, Miles. Is Jimmy the Irishman a good horse, or has he just been placed very well by Auntie Garth? I should say Adam Carley. Uh, yeah, thanks, Conor Moore. Um, he, uh, yeah, I think both of those questions are right. I think he is a good horse, but he has been very well placed. Um, and to, to find anything that can beat him in that race is going to be hard from the barrier draw. But um, this will be the run for me that will tell me whether, uh, you know, he's going to free-for-all grade. So I think the answer to that question is yes. I think, yes, he's a good horse, but he has been very well placed. What do you reckon, Puppet? Do you reckon that Jimmy the Irishman, I mean, it's pretty hard when they keep winning. It's pretty hard to knock them, isn't it? And we'll talk about Cover of Darkness a little bit later and also Santa Casa Beach. But 
I'm still in two minds about whether he's a proper good horse. They've sent him to Mildura. He wasn't bought for big money. He's also, uh, he's got that uh, that Kiwi form coming in, but I don't think they thought he was a, a super horse, but he's doing a great job. Is he a good horse or has he just been perfectly placed? I think he has, as David said, been well placed, but um, I just like him. He's got good point to point speed and um, to make a good horse, that's what you need. So he's up in grade, like there's some pretty seasoned Metro horses there. So it'll be a good test for him. Skeeter, what do you reckon? Yeah, I'm in agreement with everyone. Yes, I think he's been placed really well uh, in his Australian starts to date. But in saying that, I also think he's a really good horse. And uh, that Yarra Valley win was excellent last time out. There's no doubt that this is his biggest test to date. He comes up against some really nice horses. Sanday was excellent last week first up or a couple of weeks ago. So, look, this is going to be uh, be a challenge for him, no doubt. And I think we're going to learn a lot more um, about the horse after Saturday night. I reckon we will too. I'm going to sit on, I'm going to get splinters on this one. I, I don't, I, I, you know, Miles is talking about free for all grade. I don't know. I don't know whether he's got that kind of ability. I'll make an assessment after this week, but I don't know how it works out great for him. If he leads, he's got La Putty on his back. Who's going really well at the moment. He's going to cop pressure probably from, would you mind? Sanday's going to be put into the race. If he does beat him, maybe he is a good horse, but I'm unwilling to commit to that yet. And now just like last week, a word from our sponsors. There are 45 plus stores across Australia using national buying power. Hip pocket workwear and safety's locally owned stores have a unique place in the safety workwear, corporate clothing, that's for you, Milesy, and protective equipment market. From the work site to the office, hospitality, healthcare, sports uniforms, for us to play golf in to me get beaten by uh, 30 strokes, corporate wear, and much, much more including embroidery, hip pocket workwear and safety have you covered. We'll get our hip pocket workwear very soon to deck the participants out on burning questions. Next question for you, Skeeter, will start. Santa Casa Beach, can he continue his stunning ascension here? Not many horses go from starting their preparation in a metropolitan maiden to going up to a near free-for-all at start number four in that same campaign. Can he keep going? Can the ones keep going next to his name? Yeah, I think he can this week, Fon. Uh, obviously, I think the draw and uh, the, the horses drawn inside him probably help. I think he'll be able to um, to find the top pretty comfortably. My only slight concern is how much pressure he pops from the outside. Um, if Van Danter comes up and also always fast, um, you know, you've got to have a lot of respect for that horse, even though it didn't go to plan uh, first up. But I think if he can find the top and uh, isn't pressured too hard throughout, there's no doubt he's the horse to beat in my mind. Well, Papa's looking at the fields there. He looks like he's asleep because he's looking down through the glasses. He caught a couple of other drivers napping last week. Jason Lee and Jimmy Herbertson, he caught them asleep with Max Delight. What are your thoughts with Santa Casa Beach? It's not an easy thing to Papa to keep winning as you're going up and grade this quickly like you are now. But the race seems pretty good for him because I think he's the leader. And if he is the leader, I don't know where the pressure comes from. Yeah, it does look that sort of race. And as you said, he's racing well. I thought he probably could have won a little bit easier last week with the run he had. Um, but in saying that, like this race, there's no sort of genuine free-for-allers in it that are racing at the top of their game. So uh, if he's going to measure up to the top grade, he's going to have to win this one pretty easy. Yeah, I, I reckon that's true. He will have to win probably because I don't think he's going to get pressure. There's no obvious enforcer there, Molesby, but um, it's a pretty it's a pretty stiff sort of challenge to put to a horse, as I say, fourth run in this preparation after starting the campaign at MO level to win a race this good. But it does seem his kind of race. What are your thoughts? I disagree. I think there's plenty of pressure there. I think Van Dan will cross him early. Always fast gets a get goes across with him. And if it doesn't get the top off Van Dander, then he's going to be three wide in the last lap with some pretty serious horses behind him. Bonsell Benjamin, Rackham Up Tiger by Shadow Sacks, who are all been racing at much stronger level and they're down in grade. Um, I think he's going to have to do a bit of work. And if he does, we he will uh, we'll find out how good he really is. We used to have a bloke named Blake Redden work with me, and I called him a contrarian. Well, Miles, he's just, he's just playing devil's advocate. He's just trying to smash me from pillar to post here, disagreeing regularly. So you reckon Van Danner will cross him at the start? I think Van Danner will cross him, and if always fast scores up and behaves himself early, I think he could cross over with it. That leaves Santa Casa Beach, you know, either having to do a lot of work to get back around if always fast doesn't get the top or sit outside him. And then, as I say, he's got some strong free-for-allers if he's got to do – it is a 43 lead time and he's out and doesn't get the top. It's, uh, he will be a sitting duck for something. And uh, he's been super. I thought his run where he sat parked two runs back, I think it was, it was absolutely sensational. But 
he's uh, this will be the uh, the testing material this week. Yeah, I've got no doubt about it. And if your map works out, I'm going to jump out without a parachute, let me tell you. I don't want to be anywhere near him at that point. I've just got him leaning and getting a soft lead. But if Van Dander crosses, I'll be jumping out of the plane straight away. Puppet, you'll be driving a pretty exciting horse. And Nikita Ross, who is like uh, Andrew Denton with her research, she's got a pretty good stat about cover of darkness and trying to win a free-for-all so early in a, a horse's career. Is he our next square-gating superstar? Um, well, this week could be the you know, the uh, make or break. But um, just from that drive I had on him, he felt like a really good horse. Do you think he's – two things. What, what can you do with him early? Because I've got him in – but I don't think – you're not going to use him up too much early because he's a pretty frisky sort of a customer. So do you think you can balance him up and you'll still find the top or do you not care that much? Um, no, the way he sat in um, first run back and the way he sprinted was really good. Um so I, I don't think I'd be too fussed about leading. So um, just have to see. I think he has made one mistake out of the gate when he drew well. So um, we won't be pushing him out too hard. What do you reckon, Molsey? I mean, it's a very, very good race, but some class runner. Sparkling success is back somewhere near his best, but draws outside the second row. Cover of darkness. If he is going to be our next square getting superstar, he'd probably want to win this race, but I've got a pretty good feeling he will. Yeah, he didn't doesn't seem to be trotting super smooth either. Even when he went last week, he still has a little hitch in his gear for mine. But when they smooth that out and he, he balances up, I think he could be as good as any trotter in the land. Um, but he's uh, I'd like to see him just trot a little bit smoother before I'd be declaring him that way. But even the way he trotted last week and over the short at Melton, it's always hard to win off the back row over the 1700. Um, Pink Alars is probably going to be three back defence or and probably get a nice trip and she can motor home late. So um, I'd be looking for her and uh, Big Jack Hammer has always been great at this level to be his testing material. But um, I think uh, I think he should be should be winning this race. Well, Twenty six dollars about Big Jack Hammer and he's clearly the best ruffie in the race. Four time Group One winner twice over the short. Give us your stat now, Skeet. You've done the hard work. You have the floor. Tell us what you know. Now, I must thank uh, Tim Belfarage for this one. He looked into it for me. But uh, if Cover of Darkness is to win this weekend and take out the free for all, he would only be the third horse and the first trotter uh, to win at his win a free for all at their eleventh start. So both Black Cam and Ride High won free for alls at their tenth start, eleventh oh, start. Sorry. Um, and that is what Cover of Darkness is trying to do this weekend. Look, I think he's a super, super exciting horse, as everyone else thinks. I just still get a little bit nervous when he's trotting. I don't know why. There's just something that makes him makes me a little bit nervous about him, I think, because maybe he's a little bit highly strung, but there's no doubt he's got uh, an enormous amount of speed, and if he can win this weekend and beat some very nice rivals, albeit uh, you know a lot of them have bad draws over the, over the short trip, I think uh, he's going to stamp himself as... Uh, a definite top liner in uh, in the not too distant future. I think he probably is our next square gaining superstar. I'll tell you who probably gets most nervous when he's trotting. You puppet. Um, sort of just holding him together and, and, and keeping him in gate. Uh, what's what, what's the trick when you've got a horse that's pretty highly strung like he is? Um, I just found um, go with him in the warm up and just keep him nice and happy. And uh, Clayton said he, he's never trotted great. Um, but he never seems to break, so I wasn't really that fast. He said he corners really well and then just gets a bit crabby up the straight. Well, that's, that, that is strange, isn't it? I mean, most of them don't handle that last bend at Melton. He just, he's cruising around the bend and says, I don't want to do the right thing when I get on the straight and narrow. Who's your best bet on the card, Skeeter? It'll be the same as mine, no doubt. I might as well just say mine first and you can agree. Uh, it would be interesting to see this week, Bob, but I'm going race six, number 10, near Lanta. Uh, this week. She's been racing really well and I thought she looked the class runner in that field. Uh, $5. I was happy enough with that. I thought that was a uh, pretty good value for her. Yes, she's off the second row, but uh, her three starts recently have been fantastic and she has uh, has got the job done as being a best bet from burning questions before. So fingers crossed for Yolanda on Saturday night. Uh, D Miles might have something to say about that. You've got a few runners across the course tonight. Most of them are going to get better through the course of their preparations. A, what's your best and B, what's the best for the night? 
Um, my best for the night, as far as our own horses, I thought Jamison Steele was really good last week from a bad draw. Uh, we get use young Jaden Barker to get the claim this week, and he's drawn two on the second row, so he should get a uh, he should get a really nice run, um, and uh, he'll be finishing on you know really really strongly. We just need a little bit of little bit of high speed, um, uh, but um, and I just put him down as an each way special. That'll be my best for the night. But as long as you bet each way, how are you going to beat Struve? He doesn't let horses go past him. Uh, well, J- Jamison Seal is, and Struve are probably about the same class, and we're we, we probably a run short. But I uh, I do think that uh, if, uh, if they, he has to do any work, we'll be uh, we'll be the one finishing off at the end. I, I, I don't know what what he needs or what he doesn't need. Well, who's your best for the night, puppet of your runners, and who's the best? Um, I think Sahara Sirocco. He was really good first up, and he'll be greatly improved from that run. Is that the same race? Mm-hmm. It is. Well done, and, and Don. This, this is really awkward because you're sitting next to each other and all the rest of it, both with different hats on and all that. Like, uh, this is quite orcs. But we had this the other week, and Andy got the better of Jason Lee. They had the same in the ra- same race last week, Captain Belisario and Le Mandier. Uh It's been great fun getting stuck into burning questions again. Did you give us your best outside your own runners, D Moles, before you before you start day drinking or playing golf uh, or doing? No, I, I really like Jamison Steele each way. I think if the punters back him each way, they can't lose. All right. My final thoughts on uh, on our final question. Now, the cover of Darkness will win, but and I, I definitely think he has, he's an ex-square gating superstar, but I, look, if he does something wrong here, I'll still have the same opinion, even if he gets beaten. Uh, Puppet, are you going to stay with Molesy for a bit now and, and have a couple of drinks and enjoy the day, or are you going straight back home? No, I've got races tonight and feed up before then, so uh, I have to get back home. Try and get a camera on the computer. <laughs> I think one thing we're definitely going to follow up is the final word here. Of course, this is sponsored by Hip Pocket Work, where we're going to find out from Alison if there is a camera on that computer. Because right now, <laughs> right now she's under the pump because she's put you in a situation where you couldn't possibly win. But if that camera's on there, we're going to have you back on next week and we're going to get to the bottom of it. I can promise you 100%. That's been Burning Question. Hopefully you've enjoyed another edition. It's great watching Puppet and Molsey uh, sitting there just uh, just at Molsey's place. Well done, Skeet. Thanks, Bon. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we've found some winners on another edition of Hip Pocket's, well, Hip Pocket Workwear, I should say, sponsored Burning Questions. 